a night vision monocular. Now I've seen this on uh, eBay for spares or repair and we don't even have to disassemble it because uh, this is kind of uh, the way it's arrived. Yeah, I think that's all of it. So the uh, previous owner has apparently had a go at repairing it himself. Let's uh, see what we've got in here then. Can at least label some parts up. Have a look at things. That looks like uh, an infrared uh, LED emitter there with the heatsink on. We've got a, an assortment of screws with an arrow. Okay. And a battery compartment. Now we did say there was one of the wires had snapped off the um, battery terminal and he had attached it but it still didn't work. So I think the first thing we need to do is to try and figure out uh, kind of how it goes together a little bit. So this is basically a small LCD display I think which would be in this section here and this part here is an infrared camera and we've got a small PCB here with a microcontroller on, a place for an SD card and a USB so I think the first thing I'm going to do That one says view and that one says bat. I was going to try and connect the battery up first uh, once I solder this wire back on, but I think I'm just going to undo those two screws and just have a look at the other side of this board. Alright, we'll zoom down a bit. Now, I don't know if we'll be to repair this one. Like I said, it's, uh, it's always not good when you're going in after somebody else has already had a look. But seeing as it was only uh, £5, I thought, well, I'll take the chance. I might make an interesting repair video. Right, I think I might undo this camera. Right, the CCD part isn't actually attached to the lens. Right, tell you what then. Let's see if we can release this LCD display. I just don't want uh, dirt getting into the uh, CCD part. Right, I'll just put that to one side for the moment. Let's see if we can see anything on this part of the board. Let's zoom down a bit more if we can. So we've got a bit of damage on this uh, connector here. A bit of broken plastic there. So which one is the power input? I'll just uh, in case he's been plugging the camera, sorry, the uh, infrared emitter into where the battery goes. Possibly, I don't know. So that's the only problem when you uh, end up having a look at something that somebody else has already tinkered with. Now I guess that's some kind of uh, serial apron which I guess holds the firmware. Can't quite make the numbers out on it but... Yeah, it looks like a, some kind of memory device there, I would say. At least it's got a test pin with some mark in there. It's still quite hard to see. I'm 
I'm just trying to figure out which one is the um, the output to the infrared emitter. And I've got a feeling it might be that one. Because that looks like it goes through a, an inductor and then to there. Well, I could be wrong. Tell you what, let's see if we can figure out what that chip is. It's an AX2002. Right, I'll have a quick look at that and we'll see if this pin here is an output pin. Because this might be like a step up, um, like a boost converter for the um, for the IR emitter. Right, I'll uh, quickly look that up and then uh, I'll be back in a moment. Right, so I've had a quick look uh, online and this I see here is a LED driver. So that one must be for the LED. And then I've just noticed it does say DIR1, so diode IR1 and CIR1, so capacitor IR1. So this one must be for the infrared emitter and this must be the power in. Now the uh, power connector, the uh, black wire has just dropped out and I have just tried to remove the... Um, the pin but uh, they look rather mangled so what I'm thinking I might uh, just remove this connector here with some low melt solder and just solder the wires just direct to these terminals because I don't have one of those connectors so right so I'll get some flux on the go and uh, some low melt solder and I think we'll do that and see how we get on Let's put some low melt solar on these pins. Let's turn this around so I can uh, get to this side. There we go. Alright, let's get a bit sold our wick and we'll just uh, clean that off. Just put a bit more flux on. I'll just clean it up with a bit of IPA and the cotton bud. I'm just going to, uh, there's a little bit of a bit of solder sticking up there, I'm just going to wick that bit off. So we can just use one of these large pads for the ground because they just look connected to that. So we'll just double check with the uh, meter. Yeah. So that one's the uh, positive hand. This one's the ground, but we'll just use one of those big ones as the ground. It'll just be easier to solder onto. Let's tin these wires. Let's get rid of the slow melt solder. Let's put that back in the tube. Yeah, it's good stuff for uh, removing things like connectors and and whatever. Or I've used it for uh, removing joysticks of uh, Xbox remotes and uh, yeah it's uh, quite handy stuff and just turn these wires up I'm just going to 
put a blubber solder on here. <coughs> I'm going to put a bit of flux on here. So I think that should do for that. I'll just give that a little bit of a clean up. Right, I'll just go and grab some batteries. Right, so I've got some batteries now. Yeah, I would have thought this would have been a whole camera module, not just a, a board with a uh, lens just shoved on the end. Well, this has been a bit more tricky than I thought. I'll try this side first. I'm going to try and get this uh, LCD cable back in. It's actually went in surprisingly easy. Right, so that's the uh, battery connected up. Which one is the power button? So that goes that way, so it'll be this one here. And we have nothing. Right, so the guy did say he uh, connected uh, he connected it up and it didn't do anything still. So, right, let's uh, see if we've got any voltages going anywhere. Here, which should be, sorry, where's the ground? Yeah, we'll go from there. That should be ground, or the USB even. Right, so we've got five volts going there. Right, well, it isn't going to power up. I think because there's no power going to this uh, power button. Right, let's zoom down a bit. So looks like we've got some kind of voltage regulator possibly there. Yeah, I think we might have to bring the microscope in on this one because I think it's a bit too small to see what's going on. Right, so I've uh, got the microscope set up here. And that's where I soldered the two wires on. Looks like we've got some uh, type of voltage regulator circuit here. GP7U. I'll uh, see if I can find the data sheet on that one. Let's just uh, have a bit of explore around this board, see if we can see anything obvious. Looks like the uh, main IC there, GL3235A. That's the... Uh, memory chip that I mentioned earlier 25L8006 I think that is I've got a 12 megahertz crystal there looks like another crystal there I'm not sure what that one is I can actually see through the top of that one I think that's the um, LED infrared illuminator driver chip there. That's about it, really. That's 
can't see anything obvious uh, on there. Right, we'll flip it over and have a look at the other side. Uh, right. So this is where the power wires come in. I've got a diode there. Now it looks like somebody's done a bit of work on this uh, voltage regulator here by the look of it. LPSG. So I might have to clean that up a bit. It looks like there's a fair bit of flux uh, kicking about. That's the uh, power switch there. It's not like it's soldered on very good, mind you. Let's see if I can uh, adjust the microscope a bit. Yeah, I might go over that with the uh, iron. You know, we'll just uh, check continuity on that, I'll just uh, refocus. It's quite hard to uh, press the button, I think I need an extra hand. We well, don't seem to be getting a very good uh, reading there. Oh, there we go. Yeah, we are getting a reading there. I think I might just touch up those pins just in case. Because the soldering on none of them really looks the best. I think I'll do that. See if that makes any difference. That looks a whole lot better. Probably do the rest of them, to be quite honest with you. I think I might take that regulator off as well. We'll have a look at that to see what uh, what that's like underneath, just in case somebody's uh, soldered it on wrong or something. Because I think the on-off pin is this one here. I'm not sure where that goes. So I think I'm going to take that off. I'll just get the uh, rework station out. Clean up with a bit, uh, a bit solder wick. So for me, that looks like the ground. This looks like power in, and I would think that would be the power out. I just did a quick uh, search on the number and it came up with a different regulator. So I don't think uh, that's correct. Because on the um, data sheet I pulled up, I said that this one was the, um, the on off pin. But uh, that doesn't look quite right. I would have said that's going to be the on off pin, if anything. That looks like a control pin. Right, I'll uh, just tin those back up with a bit of fresh solder and then uh, we'll refit this. Well, I've been messing about with it for a while now, just trying to figure out what's uh, going on here. And 
I think somebody's put the wrong uh, voltage regulator in. So this is a uh, Smarkins LPSG, which is apparently is an LP two nine eight five, and the way this chip's wired, that's the output. This one's bypass. This one's the on-off. That one's ground, and that one's the input. Now the input does come to here. This one's ground, but this one's supposed to be the on off switch but that goes through this uh, inductor here and then that's the output so in this pin here which is marked output on the uh, on the chip here I see this pin here it goes through a couple of resistors here and then goes to the uh, output here which I would think that's some kind of feedback not uh, not the output. I mean, if I go from there to there, yeah, you can see that that goes. That part there is linked. I'll just get the meter and shot. Right there, there we go. So this part here is linked to there. Sorry, this uh, resistor here. So whatever the output on this chip gets fed back in through these uh, resistors and back down this thin track here onto this pin here so I think that's some kind of feedback not uh, <laughs> not the actual output and this pin here which is marked bypass actually is linked to this one here so I'm fairly sure somebody's put the wrong regulator in this because when we first looked at this this had fresh solder on so I'm thinking that's uh, this regulator has burnt out and somebody's, you know, perhaps they didn't have the number or they're just, no, five pin regulator, yeah, that'll do. Or had one, sold it in and it hasn't worked. A little bit scrape on there, there, that was me just trying to figure out whether that track went through to here or not and went off somewhere, but it, uh, it doesn't. It actually goes from uh, here back over to here somewhere. So... So I need to find a regulator that's got the uh, the same sort of footprint uh, as the PCB layout. Well, I've been having a bit of trouble trying to find a voltage uh, regulator that uh, fits here. I have found one which uh, looks to be a matching pinout. Uh, but I'm not sure what the original regulator was because definitely the one that was fitted was not the correct one. So what I'm going to do, uh, seeing as I haven't got a regulator and I'd have to order one from China, is uh, I've got this 3-volt uh, regulator that I've just uh, sold it to a little piece of circuit board there to act as a heatsink. And what I'm thinking about doing is just... Uh, glue gun in it just down here somewhere and then uh, feeding the wires up to uh, the correct points on the circuit board there so we've got the power in we've got a ground and we've got the uh, power out just there so that's what I'm gonna do and hopefully uh, we can get it up and running I mean it's not going to be back to manufacturer specification because we don't know what the original regulator was so but I think uh, you know. I think this should. Uh, I think this should work. So we'll uh, give it a go. So I've just soldered onto uh, those three pads there because it's easier than trying to solder onto uh, these little tiny ones because uh, this one goes to the capacitor there. This side's the ground, which is the same as the centre one there, and the input uh, comes from here and anyway, so that's your uh, input, ground and output. Right, so my little modification is uh, complete. Like I, say, I just tucked it in there and uh, glue gunned it in place, right, let's uh, put the battery in and see uh, what it does. Right, fingers crossed. Where's the power button? It's here, isn't it? Oh, I can see something. But I can't see what it says. 
can see something saying SD there. So uh, I'm going to see a camera sign. Right, well it appears to be doing a lot more than it did and I can see uh, something there. Right, I think what we'll do is now we'll uh, reassemble it or try and figure out how it goes together because obviously I didn't take it apart. Yeah, power off. Right, so I think what we'll do now, we'll reassemble it uh, and give it a proper test outside in the dark and we'll see if it all works. I was just going to say, at least all the screws are the same length. So I presume those two, I must go in the top of this bit. Now this seemed to be quite a common failure because uh, when I was looking uh, to see if we could find any info about these, there was quite a few of them, or quite a few reviews on Amazon with pretty much exactly the same fault. Just pull these bits out for now. So I think this must be uh, quite... Uh, common problem with these so my modification might actually make it better right how does this thing go together then right so I'm just go like that way then I need to figure out where this uh, which way this thing goes I guess it must just go in like that That's where the cable goes. I think those wires are just about to snap off as well. Right, I think I'm going to have to put a bit of uh, hot glue or something on that. Or resolder them. Actually, I'm just resolder them. That's okay. Right, so I'm just going to resolder these two wires quick. Because it looks like they've been bent a few times. Let's knock this microscope light off. I think that's better. I guess this bit of tape is where the uh, wires went originally. So where does the battery compartment go? this way because there's a little thing there yeah it looks about right right how does this go on then looks like it's sliding this might go on after the fact because it looks like yeah uh, looks like actually one of them's a bit bent and possibly being glued and so it looks like those go in and then clip in at the front so that needs to go on after Right, where does this bit go on then? I see, right, okay. You can't take that bit out. It looks like it's just pushed on with kind of glue stuff. Like that. But I think I might have to screw that bit together first that's the only thing when you uh, haven't taken something apart yourself and you're trying to figure out how it goes back together well, that's not too far away now ah, you know what it looks like the battery compartment it looks like you've got to put this pin in first Well, that's a pain. Let's see if I can half tear it apart without uh, taking it all apart. See if we can get the uh, control panel back on. I'll just shove this in here for now. Right, so it was that side in first. Right, 
I think that's it all back together. Let's put some batteries in now then. Right, so power. Yes, Night Fox. Menu, where's that? We've got a menu on here. Mode. No image. Oh, that's done something. Now oh, there we go. Some menu, date, time, flicker, LCD, backlight, enter. Right, I think uh, the next thing is to uh, see if it uh, works and records or anything. So I shall take it outside and uh, we'll see uh, what we get on it. So here's a little bit of footage that I've recorded uh, with the camera while out on the field. I think you can see some of the sheep there in the uh, distance. So the resolution isn't particularly great. I mean, uh, it's only 640 by 480 and the picture quality is a little bit uh, grainy. I see a couple of rabbits. There's a one there. And there's a couple more just to the right here. This is uh, one of our cats. This is a uh, kiwi sat on the wall there. And uh, we've got another cat, just a little bit to the right here, uh, Socks, if I can uh, just find her in the uh, scope there. There she is. So that's Socks. So there we go then, repairing a night fox, night vision monocular scope. Right, if you enjoyed this video, please give it the thumbs up. If you want to see more like it, please subscribe. Any comments or questions, please leave it in the comments section below. And as always, have a great day. Thanks for watching.